and I'd never done anything at Hampstead, and it, it, it was Ed, Ed Hall, never heard of the yeah. play, never heard of Martina. Yeah. And I got the play, and I thought, well, I'll read it. And I, I don't think, you know, this is the next thing, because I really want to do a film. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I started reading it, and I started reading it. I couldn't put it down, and I didn't, yeah. I didn't know why. Yeah. And that's a strange thing to have about a play, because the play doesn't really explain itself. <laughs> I actually had a similar response when I, when you told me you wanted to discuss this speech and right. for people who don't know the play, it's the prologue, isn't it? It's the opening speech. So actually, yes, the opening speech, yeah. yeah, I thought, well, okay, I can, you know, I don't need to read the whole play to understand this. It's the first thing we mm. see of the play. So, you know, I'll yep. sit down and read the prologue, make sure that I know what Adrian and I are chatting about. And I had exactly the same experience. I sort oh, of got good. to the end of the prologue having printed it out and I was like, well, I don't know what happens next. I ended up opening up the PDF on my computer again and being like, ah, okay, and, and reading sort of the first half of the play because it just had this flow. I'm just making a few notes here because I don't uh, go, off, <laughs> go off into actor anecdote because I will, I will. Oh, please. I have to, think, I have to make notes. Actor anecdote keep, is exactly what we want. To keep myself... Um... Do not censor yourself, Adrian. This is not the place. <laughs> it's not the place, Okay. It's a four-hander. Um, the cast was Emily Barber, Jack Hunter, who has cerebral palsy and was a, was a wheelchair user in the play, although not in life he isn't. Mm. And Katie Sullivan, who um, is an actress and she actually um, is an Olympian as well. I read this. I was like, that <laughs> is rude. That's just rude <laughs> That's to be true. a brilliant She's actress right. and a Paralympian. And a Paralympian. But the, the, the way that people would talk, that they would speak about, you know, people, you know, one attitude on the phone and then when they meet you, they've got this other attitude and you can see them going into God. what I would describe as some, sometimes race panic, where people yeah. have said... They've said something and their eyes go wide and they go, oh God, I hope we didn't hear that. And when I said dark, I didn't mean, I mean, I, yeah. meant, I meant mood, I meant mood, not actually. And, and they have the same thing when they sort of meet yeah. someone and they sort of flick and look at their body and go, oh, I'm not going to mention it. Oh, it's there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what do I do? You, you suddenly you become aware um, in using language of just how language has been constructed with one point of view in mind. Oh, um, yeah. Not only like when I do a job, I have to, and I, I know say it's a classical text. Mm. You don't have to read very far into the classical text before you come to a bump of color where mm. black is just negative and bad and horrible. And you go, um, mm. I understand it. And it's all, you know, fine. And that's what we used to say. But mm. now when we know much more about our world and our world looks very, very different, it mm. kind of pings out at you. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And, and such is the same when when talking to Katie and you just have to, you know, you just run around with it for a bit, you know, when you just have to get it on its legs and just try and, you know, it's all these little yeah, phrases how we interesting. use without yeah. w w w using physicality to describe a mood or a feeling rather than, you know, being more specific with our words. It's, it's yeah. a strange, strange thing to discover. So why this speech? What is so magical about this speech? Because I feel like actually when you read the prologue, I wasn't aware at that point that this was a play that was going to focus actually on disability versus able-bodied people yeah. or caring. Yeah. That yeah. None of that comes up in this prologue, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, for firstly, why the prologue? The, the prologue mm. sticks out in my mind because it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven pages and I would every night I would just get this these butterflies in my stomach as I was just preparing to go on I wanted to ask that I was gonna ask oh was it nerve-wracking it was nerve-wracking mm. and um I I love those little bits of our job where you you get tested the play flips backwards and forwards in time so at that mm. point he his wife is dead Arnie mm. his wife is dead he is mourning her he um is he's, he's telling he's going to tell people the story of you know how it happened and why he feels so sad mm. but there's there's a note that martina writes in the at the beginning of the play she says self pity is not a is not a currency for these people mm. self pity is the worst thing humor yeah. is the best thing so mm. eddie is incredibly sad he's incredibly lonely he's a recovering alcoholic 
and he's mm. desperate for a drink. He's desperate for company and he misses his wife so much and he feels incredibly alone. But the last thing he does in that speech is mention it. He doesn't want to say, yeah. I feel lonely. Uh, yeah. I miss my wife. Will you please talk to me and help me? Because I don't think I'm going to last very long. Mm. He doesn't say any of that. He, he, it's like everything that he doesn't say is the most important thing. Yeah. So just to clarify, at the sort of at the beginning of the timeline, at least that the play portrays, mm-hmm. Arnie and Eddie have separated, and actually, yeah. you only the character of Eddie only goes back to care for her because she's had an accident. And he feels he is the best person to to be her carer. Is that right? Yeah, that's how he explains it to her. Right. But actually, he he loves her and he misses her. Yeah. He doesn't, again, in the play, he doesn't say it. He just says, but look, who else is going to look after you? He yeah. says, I got my nurse, I got my things, I got my, you know, I don't need <laughs> you. And you're in the audience, you're sitting there thinking, yes, you do. Yeah. You desperately need him and he yeah. desperately needs you. What yeah. about this opening speech? Was it just the, you know, you've already mentioned this thing that it's sort of seven or eight pages long. Yeah. It can't be just the length of it that was intimidating because, as you say, you have played, I mean, well, the Peterbrook Hamlet you know, is a longer period of time alone on a stage, surely. Yeah, it is, um, yeah. So what was it about it that gave you the, the jitters? Um, it sounds so simplistic to say getting it right. Mm. Just getting it right. I had to kickstart the play and make sure the audience got all the information they needed to understand the play mm-hmm. from the mouth of a guy who doesn't um, express half of what he's feeling. At some audiences, you walk out and you you look at them, and you begin to chat, and uh, and they just get scared. Mm. They go right back in their seat and go, no, 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 he's talking yeah, to me. Yeah, you can see oh, it. Yeah, he's going to make fun of one of us. One of us is going on stage. Something <laughs> bad's going to happen. And I'm going to be chopped in half. <laughs> and people get fearful. Um, yeah. You know, any any comedian will tell you the, the same thing that people just sort of go back. Oh no, he's going to pick on us. Oh no. Yeah. But you have to sort of say no, 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 no. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And yeah. there were some nights where I came out and I began, and the audience would right there, leaning forward, listening to every single word, and you could tell when I hit a conclusion of a thought, there would be mm. this little action, a little intake of breath or a little, <laughs> a little <laughs> something that just said, oh, you're, you're really listening to everything I say. So yes. it's gonna be, this is going to be easier today. Yeah. One of the things that struck me when I was reading the prologue was mm. the extent to which Martina uses punctuation or not mm. and line mm. breaks. Like it's mm-hmm. very like to see this prologue on the page, it looks like a poem almost. Yeah. You know, she shifts lines so frequently. How did you find that? Did it feel like a real sort of guiding hand? Uh, it was terrible. <laughs> 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 because um, you mentioned poetry, but just like poetry, it's a lot of disjointed thoughts. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and non sequiturs just following on from each other. So I had to... Oh, this is going to sound so terrible. I had to learn the music of it, if you know yeah. what I mean, rather than because he, rather than the um, the progress, the, the the beautifully written progressive lines of thought. You know, every every thought completed before moving on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. He speaks just like you know you do in real life, I suppose. He'll yeah. set up a, a a clause. He'll go. I mean, the first time I was on the bus, it was just it was terrible because you know, see, I like to go for a walk, <laughs> and, and you're just going. What about the bus, man? What about the bus? Yeah. So I had to look. I had to look. I put this speech in my headphones. I read it through and put it in my headphones, and I had it playing, you know, daily mm. for about a week. Um, mm. two weeks before we started rehearsals so that by the time I walked into rehearsals that this speech was learned yeah I didn't want to spend any rehearsal time trying to learn the lines when I had a, I grew a beard right um for the and let my hair grow for the part mm. and then I had to go and do a reshoot on a part that I've done previously mm. which was a sort of like I think about a, a, a week before the end of the run mm. and so I go off and I have my hair completely cut and tidied <sighs> and sharpened up I have I go completely clean shaven and then I come back to continue the run and it just felt wrong yeah and Katie took one look at me and went this is just no this is weird. that's not him yeah he, he I and I thought it, it actually felt really bad because I looked like someone who'd got up and shaved that morning and had tidied their hair yeah. and really took care of their appearance. And that just isn't the guy. No. It broke the reality of it. 
for yeah. this. So anybody who saw that performance, I apologize for my lack of hair, but I hope you still got the play. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautifully written um, speech and um, it's one that, I, I, you know, it's, it's a part that I was so lucky to play. Thank you.